Hello again, Tabitha with Appalachian Rising Ventures and today we're going to take you on a tour of uh, what has most recently been called the Levine Building. Um, a prior resident who lived here told me that these actually used to be called the Elgin Apartments above the storefront, but uh, the building is here behind me and as you can see it's a three-story building. The first floor was commercial space and the, and the top two apartments were actually, um, or top two floors were actually apartments. And uh, there's a lot of interesting things about this building as well. It does have a lot of uh, water damage. Um, and the interesting thing about uh, this building though is that we have had um, some people that lived here uh, years ago sending us some photos so hopefully we can mix some of those in but um, the inside of the building is a little dark I did forget my flashlight today but we'll do our best to show you uh, just in reference to other buildings that we've already given you a tour of um, there are two built two smaller buildings and then there's the mercantile building here which actually has an operational uh, mercantile and coffee shop in it right now uh, the owner of that building Tommy uh, is going to do a future tour with us so you can see his building because we're working on helping him uh, get some funds and plans in place to rehab that building and the reason we are trying to work collectively is because the next building down is the peak building and we um, as you know from our tour of that building there's quite a bit of water damage coming in on the back side of that building as well. So we're hoping to be able to come behind all of these buildings and work on the water issues uh, from the hillside above that are affecting uh, all of the buildings in this strip. So uh, let's go and check out the entrance. So this is the entrance to the Levine building and it's uh, architecturally has some unique features to it. One of the things that I really um, think is interesting about this is the display area which has been updated a little bit. You can tell there's some linoleum and things that have been added over the years that wouldn't have been original. But um, there's this old, what we would call can lighting uh, in, the, um, in the ceiling of these display areas. So it would have been well lit. Um, this was used as a florist shop at one point. So they probably had some displays in here. And I was told as well that there used to be a music store uh, in this first floor, so they would have maybe put instruments in here. Um, but it has a lot of the original, what we believe is the original, um, or at least very old, uh, metal framing around the windows. We think this tile might have been added later um, because it appears to be more like of a 50s, 60s type uh, addition to the building. But you have this um, entrance that is kind of an archway. We have not seen the original uh, pictures of the building to see if this awning was added later or not, but it does appear that um, this arched entryway was original to the building. You can see that they've, uh, over the years, somebody's tried to paint and cover up that light at the top, and I don't know why you would do that, but um, somebody, somebody thought it was important to block some of that light out. Maybe when they put in a drop ceiling at some point, because um, it does look like the drop ceiling that was there goes below that. Um, but this door was probably added later as well. Um, we suspect from the framing of this that it had a uh, door similar to what would have been on the peak building originally, which would have been wood doors that um, opened up on both sides. So, And this building, uh, they actually have done quite a bit of clearing already, <laughs> whether you can believe it or not. Uh, I think they mostly were just using it. Um, the previous owner owned a lot of rentals. So we think that they were using it for a lot of old appliance storage. Some of them, um, like these, came out of a laundromat uh, area, maybe in one of her buildings, because they do have uh, coin slots on them. But um, they have cleaned quite a few things out of here, so we can get through just a little bit better. It was pretty packed, so you couldn't, couldn't really see it all. Up here, you can see that under this drop ceiling, um, there is an original tin ceiling of some sort up there, or more than likely fairly original. And they filled in 
all of this with peg boards, um, it's my understanding at some point somebody was maybe even doing some appliance stuff out of here. And I think that's what a lot of this stuff is left over from. And as you can see, they covered up all the windows around the entrance with this wood and it's just dark. Um, so all of that will of course be removed because I would say the ceilings are a good 12 foot in here to the original ceiling. They're still fairly, well, maybe even higher than that, maybe like 15 foot because that uh, drop ceiling looks like it's about 12 foot. So this space um, is kind of kind of uh, short as far as the width, but it's very long and it had this tall ceiling. So there's a lot of water damage to this building from the back side, especially. So the further we go back in the building, you'll see more damage. Here's um, an old, I think it's a um, iron tub, I think, I think is what they made those out of. This is the back room. We're getting more into what would have been the boiler room. Here is um, what might have been a safe room or maybe even a walk-in fridge. We're not 100% sure because we don't have any lights in here yet and they haven't cleaned everything out for us to be able to get in here, but it's full of junk <laughs> that needs to be hauled off. We've got just random, um, random building supplies in here. This is a heat pump part. And if you look at the back side here, ooh, I'm walking through a spider web. Gonna see my best ninja moves. Um, there is in this back corner, um, there's a bricked up spot in the wall there. And we're thinking that there might have been like a coal chute area in this back corner, but you can see they've had to come in and put in some support beams at some point. These are newer. So they knew they were having some structural issues with this building already at some point because somebody came in and did these fairly recently. Oh, thank you. That does help a little bit. Thanks. We have an extra flashlight. Oh my gosh. Sometimes in the dark, things scare you. Um, there are some stairs here that do look attached to the wall at the top, but the bottom is completely eroded out. But it does look like you could crawl up onto this space up here before. They might have just left it for access to pipes and all that stuff, but this is what would be called the boiler room. And as you can see, there is a, if not original, very, very old furnace in here. There's your stoker. I remember the correct word this time. And uh, in the back there, looks like some other tanks. And this room is really creepy looking, actually. <laughs> Um, in fact, in some ways, it's a little creepier than um, whoop, the peak building boiler room is to me, but I don't know how much you can see, but there's another chute right back there on the wall. There we go. And um, that also it, it's not like a traditional chute, so I think it's kind of, um, I'm not really sure that that was the coal chute. But we see, can see some coal on the ground on both sides, so we're not entirely sure um, where the coal came in on the inside of this building. This one we're still exploring quite a bit. And part of why we haven't assessed this building as much is because it will probably be... Um, the one we'll work on the longest, probably the last one to finish because in many ways um, it's probably like worse than any of them. I feel like I've got spider webs in my hair everywhere now. So to get to the apartments, there is uh, an entry to the side here that's going to go up a long staircase. Uh, it's pretty much just been boarded up because at some point, as you can see, uh, somebody has shattered the commercial glass there. And um, we've got a lot of peeling, plaster, and paper on the walls here. It's missing its handrail. Um, it's what I'm going to assume was here because you can see the holes. 
but the steps are in pretty good shape on the front end of the building. Most of the, most of the damage on this building is on the, on the back end. Do can. So on this level, currently it's split up to three apartments, but we do believe that this apartment and this apartment, which would be a cons uh, efficiency apartment, is what we would call it by today's standards. We think that used to all be one apartment, and I'll show you some of the modifications inside we see that make us think that. But as you can see, there's a lot of water damage, uh, plaster just falling from the ceiling. You can see up to the boards um, under there. And we'll go straight back here to the bathroom of this apartment first. And if you look here, you can see, this is the, for reference, let me put my hand there. You can see how wide this baseboard is. But when you look in this bathroom, the baseboard goes to a smaller, maybe three inch board. And so we think from the way that um, this is more done in, that they came and built this um, bathroom in later and that this wasn't original. But somebody did try to uh, update it at one point. This is paneling <clears throat> that has been put on the ceiling. And um, so you can look out this window actually. So we own the, if you notice the building to the left of the Levine building, that was my grandpa's original TV and appliance repair shop. And, um, it actually was sold to someone else for a while and we recently purchased it back, but um, the whole ceiling has pretty much caved in on it. So it's just a facade, but the plan is to try to use this area to shoot debris from the building out because um, we cannot park dumpsters on the street. So we do have to have a plan. So this, this is gonna help us to have this space over here when we do start working on this building. Again, just extensive water damage on this floor. The further we go back in the apartment building, the worse it gets. But we're going to go back toward the front right now. I'm just walking through spider webs everywhere today. Um, we haven't been in this building for <laughs> probably a month or two now because uh, we've been busy on the others. But um, this was probably set up as a living room. One of the things that I love about this is these French doors. You're going to see a lot of uh, gorgeous woodwork that still exists in these apartments. But somebody did come in and put in this paneling, probably just to cover up plaster over the years. But um, this appears to have been used as a bedroom because there is a closet. And since this is attached to the kitchen area, I'm going to assume that they might have used this uh, space in here. <laughs> yeah, watch the trip hazards. Uh, they might have used this space in here as a dining room, um, but they, they did put some closet space in over here, but I'm going to assume that they might have used it as a dining room, but it could have also been a bedroom because at some point there was a door attached here. This is what remains of the kitchen area. It's pretty, uh, pretty bad shape as you can see. Um, there is probably had some appliances over here. That's an older, um, I guess you call it, it's what we would call PVC board now. I'm not sure what it was called back in the sixties that that was put in later, of course. But if you look up through here, you can see that there's this shaft and we'll, we'll be able to look down up here from the third floor too, but, um, it goes all the way up. It's boarded up at the top. And it does look like somebody's put a cabinet space in there, but we think this might have been some kind of air shaft, but also um, it might have just been access originally for plumbing and electrical because it's very different from the other light and air shafts in all the other buildings that we've been looking at downtown. Um, but you can see there's a lot of damage from water. And as we get to the third floor, that even gets a little trickier. So 
that's one thing that makes these buildings a little challenging to tour. Um, it's obviously why we can't let people inside the building because they're not, they're not safe. So this, uh, this room, this is a uh, basically an efficiency apartment. This room would have been used as a small kitchen area. Looks like they put a stove in here. And one of the things that I think is kind of interesting, here's a closet space that's under the staircase um, that will be going up in a little bit to, this, to the third floor. And um, it looks like they used it maybe as like a pantry closet space. And uh, that door appears to be original because on this side, it has the uh, glass doorknob. I'm not sure. It looks like a metal on that side, uh, just like a little latch thing. But on this side, you can see the glass doorknob. Um, so that is probably um, all original to the building. So we can kind of get an idea there of, of the, wood, the wood color that they were using uh, in here before all of this um, later paneling was added in. You can see the staircase going to the third floor. There's a ton of deterioration, so that's why we have to play um, a, tw a, a combination of hopscotch to twister when we go upstairs to make sure we avoid the holes. Uh, but this was probably used as the bedroom um, for this particular unit. Um, and here's the back side of that other bathroom area from the first apartment. And as you can see, they were using it for a small bathroom um, with the water heater set in here as well. But somebody plastered that ceiling at some point fairly recently because that looks like new, uh, new stuff. But well, when I say fairly recently, I don't mean really recently. But <laughs> in the last 20, 30 years. But, um, so this would have been a smaller apartment. In recent years, originally it might have been part of that first apartment though. And so on the back side of the second uh, floor, we have this apartment that goes all the way to the back of the building. Uh, we won't be able to go out the back door because as you can see, this one has a lot of extensive water damage toward the back side. But um, I actually love this apartment. John and I keep joking that when we get done, this is the apartment we're going to live in. Because uh, when, you, when you come in this apartment, you can really see what the city life probably was like back then. You got a uh, closet here in the entryway. And again, um, this would have been original probably to the building and I love that space but the thing that's kind of unique about this is you this would have been your entryway and there's actually room for an entry table or mirror or something here I'm not sure what that piece of wood is on the wall but this paneling is obviously had has been added in at some point um, and it even sounds hollow in places so I can't wait till they get to that to see what's behind there probably nothing but <laughs> but uh, this would have been your living room and it's a good size especially because uh, this one was built around uh, the 1920 era as well so this was a very large uh, living room parlor area back then for an apartment especially but you can see there's still a lot of original woodwork in here again these uh, French doors that are going to go to what uh, would have been the dining room space um, and I can't wait to pull up this carpet that's in here because first of all, it's disgusting. But second of all, I'm sure that what remains of the floor under here is in pretty good shape because it feels solid. This would have been access to the plumbing for the tub for the bathroom that's on the other side of this wall. Um, and that looks like it was built in originally. So this building, when it was built, had um, all of the luxuries of, of uh, city living your indoor plumbing and all that fun stuff. You can't see very well through this space because uh, the building beside us, they have kind of built up. Um, I don't know if you can see the light coming through the boards there, but they've built against our building and put this board space up to block this space between the buildings. And um, there's some weird stuff out there, but this would have um, been um, and a, a light area 
um, originally. And you can tell they've added some things like these tiles and stuff are fairly modern. I'll use that word loosely. Uh, sticky tiles on the floor that updated things. Uh, but this tub is a metal tub. I don't know uh, how far back, I'm not a tub expert, so I don't know how far back the tub dates, but I, I can tell that this add-in for the shower was done um, later. You can tell all that's a plastic, but the tub is metal that's in here for now. Um, and the plan is to convert these um, spaces back to living spaces in the long run. So we will be following a lot of this floor plan this room, you can see the wall. This wall actually is in pretty good shape, but you can see a lot of um, moisture damage coming in along that side of the building. This wall is falling down all the way down to, if John was here, he could tell you. I cannot remember what these wood strips are called that went under plaster. Um, I've looked at that term a million times, but it slips my mind every time I'm on video, so many of these terms. But this window is one of the most interesting things in this building to me because um, this just shows how nature will just take back over if you let it. This vine has literally grown through the windowsill and it's crawling up the window and it's crawling down and um, it's from the vegetation outside the window because there's a sloping, sloping hillside here. Um, and I just imagine that like people probably came down that hillside over the years and probably even just came in through that window because you know how kids are. But there's a closet here and it's small in comparison to what we would, uh, how deep our closets would be now. Um, but it is a closet space. So um, if you know anything about older houses, a lot of times they don't have closets. So um, that's another sign to me that this was like your high city living because it was built with closets and bathrooms. This is a doorway that has been uh, boarded up. We'll look on the other side of that in a minute. And this is the back bedroom. And um, I hope that you can see how bad some of this um, damage is. Now we have been told by the building inspector that you can see actually right here, these looks, look like some original iron pipes up here in the corner too. Um, we've been told by the building inspector that even though this mold is black, that it's not what is considered black mold. Um, he told us how to tell the difference in that. And so this mold should be able to be remediated by us just removing things and fixing the issues that caused the water damage in the first place. Um, but of course we'll get some experts in here when we start a lot of that stuff. But if you look out this window, you can see there is a concrete uh, patio and staircase out here. And when we get to the third floor, um, we can go out and come back around, but this is part of what has caused um, some of the damage to the building because this concrete patio was probably built with a drainage system in it, but over the years, because it wasn't maintained, it backed up, um, filled, filled up. And you can see inside this closet, somebody put some paneling in at some point, but there's some water damage there, um, which is going to be the other side of the kitchen. When we get around there, you'll see that space. But we're actually going to walk all the way back through here to the living room and go through the French doors. So you can see kind of the full um, area through here. This would have been the dining room, more than likely, because it's right off of the kitchen. And there is a hallway entrance. So this was a nice floor plan. Again, um, we've got this building beside us that's completely almost fallen in. This back end has a little bit hanging on, but... Um, what I think is somebody was using uh, this corner too, it looks like for a, uh, an extra closet at some point. Uh, I love the creativity of this bar installation here. But somebody has updated this a little bit because this is like a newer um, drywall technique that they've used on the ceiling. Somebody tried to patch it up. This is of course newer paneling. But this uh, kitchen back here is where we begin to see how bad some of the water damage in this building is. So you can see that it has 
somebody put this wallpaper up at some point probably that looks like an 80s pattern to me but um this is the closet space that's going toward that that closet in the bedroom would have been in this far corner this would have been uh, beside it and then that boarded up door is right here where this seam is you can kind of see it popping loose so at some point there was a hallway um, door here and I'm kind of wondering if this door was original it's actually crooked if you uh, if you saw it from the other side it's actually a uh, kind of crooked in how it's in there. I wonder if they moved the wood over here and, and made the plan a little bit different, but there is a lot of damage here. Now, I don't know where these uh, cinder blocks came from, <laughs> but um, you can see the brick exterior of the building with this door. Somebody has just boarded up the door to try to keep people out. It looks like somebody's tried to break in at some point there. Um, but you can literally see all the way down um, this wall and see some of the pipes and things down below. So this would have been in that top portion. Um, so this is really extensive damage on the backside. So the structural engineers will have to come in and assess this and, and how to fix it, of course. Um, but that's the, that's the worst side of the building as far as damage everything else you know I mean the ceiling is obviously leaking on this that's why we've had these uh, areas in the front that are a little bit damaged from water as well but structurally most of the bones of this building seem pretty good so we're hopeful now this is the staircase going up to the third floor and uh, we do know some things have been modified up here as well. So we'll kind of look at some of that. And I do believe that um, the gentleman who's spoken to me lived in this top apartment on the right. Um, but then there's an apartment to the left that is one apartment as well. So, so I think originally this whole building had four apartments upstairs, but now it's got the three on the second floor and two on the first. Um, so we'll look at modifying that when you walk up these steps you have to walk to the right side because if you remember on the back side of that staircase all that damage here's what it looks like on the top and you can actually see through to the apartment right there there's holes in the floor and this is what's hard to maneuver around when you're trying to walk through with cameras and stuff this hallway space kind of just blows your mind um, because there is just so much going on here and um, as if this wasn't enough the original meters and electrical seem like they were actually in this closet so I'm not sure how old this is this does look newer but I don't know that this is original I'm sure if we looked the Trumbull engine the tr Trumbull electric manufacturing company in Plainville and I'm not seeing a date on that but um, never heard of that company either somebody who's maybe an expert on uh, electrical history could tell you but you can see that there's still like everything in here we're assuming this was stopped they stopped using this because there's a duct work here that comes out to this new stuff on the wall. Um, and then there's this big box, but all of this was just here in the hallway. <laughs> it's uh, not very attractive, but. Okay, so this is where it gets a little tricky here again, because this is probably where the water is coming in up here, because all of this has caved in as well. At some point they've put in a drop ceiling here to try to cover up what's going on here and then you know it's just fallen in as the water has eat, eaten through the building so you have to kind of walk to the left here or to the right sorry and you can see there has just been a ton of damage on this floor because the roof is failing we have all of this stuff in the floor 
There's uh, tiles here, but you can tell they're just peeling up because of the water. This bedroom, oh, um, there's been some more fall since the last time we were in here because this was not hanging down the last time I was in here. But this drop ceiling has fallen in. But the thing I find most interesting about this is this is a closet space back here. And this was a window that has been closed up on that side. Um, probably when they were uh, putting in that drop ceiling and doing everything out there, they closed the space in. But used to, there was a window here that went to the hallway. And that was probably because it let in the light and that space is actually just closed in. So the only way to get into that space is through that window um, because you can't even, like the closet has a wall in it right there. Um, so I don't know why when they boxed it up, I guess they just didn't want to cut into the wall and make the closet bigger. But um, so I don't know if people just use that little space inside that window for storage that lived here over the years or not, but it's kind of interesting. Another room that just has extensive water damage you can see almost the entire ceiling has fallen in um, all that drop ceiling is falling in there's a closet kind of space built into the corner there honestly have not walked into that room um, there's so much stuff on the floor i'm sure john has when he's been checking things out but probably a bedroom space another bathroom space and at some point it was updated a little bit because you can tell that tile board on the wall is a little newer. Um, this bathtub might actually be completely new because it looks plastic from here, but that's an older sink. And of course the original doors. This kitchen has a lot of water damage. There's no nothing left to the ceiling but these little wood strips. There's a big chunk of ceiling hanging with the light here. Somebody tipped the, that's a fairly new uh, stove because it has a flat top, but somebody tipped it over and left it when they left, I guess, or came in and vandalized something because it's no other explanation for why it'd be tipped over. Here is that uh, pass-through area that we were showing you from the second floor. So there's some um, access to the back of this tub, but again, it almost looks like this um, is just like a shaft area and there's that little ledge that's like pushed in. I guess that comes from the closet now that I'm looking at it. Um, but this was original. This, this little square space was built into the building and we're not entirely sure without blueprints what it was used for, but it seems like it would have been maybe a, a shaft for the air. There's a original hardwood floor in here that actually still looks like it's uh, in pretty decent shape underneath all of this mess, but um, you, you can see they came in at some point and put in this paneling and put in the drop ceiling, and none of that, of course, survived because the roof wasn't maintained. And this is a bedroom that they were using in this space and the front windows are fairly uh, original but all of this closet space was built in and it also looks like they came in and modified um, this wall and put in a newer window because they put in this like AC unit that they built around um, to maybe make it a little bit more permanent but everything is falling in. So this, um, this is the front apartment on the third floor. And we've got this back apartment we're going to go check. And again, walk to your left this time and avoid the holes. <laughs> so this might have, um, I'm not entirely sure that this has not been modified. Um, the floor looks original here and that that baseboard looks original of course they put in the drop ceiling but it looks like you would come into this apartment and go to the right originally but a lot of this looks like newer plaster 
I don't know if it was just a better maintained apartment or if uh, somebody did some work to it later. Here's um, the first bedroom that we're going to come to. And it's got a fairly good sized closet back there. And at some point somebody came in and tried to put some paneling up on the ceiling, probably because the plaster. You can kind of see out this window. And this is the um, this is the building beside us. And this is a porch over that built in area. Um, but there were there was quite a bit of light in this top apartment. And I think that um, for some reason the ceiling above there looks like there's some extensive roof damage coming through there too. But most of this room seems in pretty good shape. A smaller second bedroom. And um, now we're kind of up one floor so you can really see out over this building beside us that's falling in as well. And you can see you've got a pretty good view of town. We, we aren't sure that the second building over originally had a lower roof because it looks like there's a tar line, like that building originally was two stories. So I don't know if this is what it originally would have looked out this window at, but the windows did exist. So, which I think is important to note about this building because um, that's a, a sign of how the building was built. But this is a smaller closet. Again, seems to be having some water damage. They put a drop ceiling in here, which is held up a little bit better than some places. Um, but then um, there is a, probably was used as a bedroom as well here because it has a closet. But then again, this closet looks like all of this closet space was built in later, like it was converted to a bedroom. So this might have originally not been a bedroom. Um, but again, lots of damage here. I mean, in some ways, I guess it makes it a little easier because we don't have to gut that stuff. It <laughs> just have to scoop it up with a shovel. And this is a bathroom that, again, was remodeled at some point because you've had that newer drywall texturing done to the ceiling at some point. They've put up this, um, what's supposed to look like a tile, but is actually a board around what might have been the original bathtub because, it, again, it's a metal bathtub. And that linoleum, I'm going to say, looks maybe circa 1960. It actually is a pretty cool pattern. Um, but this is the bathroom for this apartment. And then this is kind of the uh, big room in the back that um, probably was used as a living space. And again, it has this nasty carpet in it. But you can see out this back window um, what we were talking about earlier. There's the a staircase that comes from these balconies. And this has actually grown up so much in the last uh, just like two or three months. Um, we're gonna work on clearing this hillside and getting some spray on it to get rid of this and, and some of the trees and stuff back here. But um, this balcony and porch space is very unique to this building in Appalachia anyways. So um, it's, it's to me kind of interesting We'll go out there in just a minute, but ugh, I'm knocking stuff down. But this is the kitchen. I hear dripping water. Extensive damage to the ceiling in here. Um, the wall is pretty much just falling apart on that side. These cabinets actually look like they've shifted. But it was updated at some point because that's like 60s, 70s paneling, uh, especially above the cabinets. Those are newer cabinets, but... Um, just falling apart now. So now we're going to step out here. So we're on the third floor. And the second floor and third floor apartments on the back end have these concrete balconies. And um, there's even an old oil tank over there, which I think might have been used for another building originally. It doesn't look like it, the pipes come this way. But um, 
a lot of the vegetation in areas like this really does kind of take over and cause more damage. So we do have to address some things with that. But you can see that um, this wall is built into the hillside. And then this concrete is poured and there's even more um, block underneath that. And what I think is so interesting, they've come in at some point and and this is newer concrete block on the top levels. So they've come in at some point and put some newer block in, maybe even did some concrete work, but let me move some of this stuff. It's amazing just in two or three months how much has changed about um, just these buildings. But if you come down these steps, this would have been to the back of the second floor. And you can see that the concrete is really starting to weep here. Um, so it's, it's coming in from behind this wall. Um, so that'll have to be addressed at the top, of course, before it can be addressed at the bottom. But you can see these concrete walls were literally built right into the cliff side. There is exposed rock here. And over on this side, you can see kind of old concrete was put in maybe to cover that up. And there is some water um, kind of coming through that rock naturally as well too. And this space down below is really wet. You can see the moss. Anybody that knows anything about mountain life knows what makes moss grow. You can see there's extensive damage here. This is under that windowsill and everything's pulling away from the brick um, where the water has just ran down for so long. This, um, they've put this stone coating over the concrete, but you can see it's eroded out here enough that it's um, exposed the rebar. I guess that's what they called it back then too, is that rebar? I don't know. And this whole, I don't know if you can see the water mushing, there is just like a layer of just organic material and water on here. So at some point they're going to come in here and clear all of this off and try to figure out if there is a drainage system here um, that would have drained this out naturally. But this was the back end of that kitchen that had the hole in the floor. They've just boarded up a window here in the corner, which I think maybe even had cabinets on it on the other side or something. But they changed that part of it. You can see up above, it has these steel beams, um, but they have had quite a bit of weathering and deterioration over the years as well. They look solid. I'm not a structural engineer though, so can't take my word for it, but <laughs> they look like they're still solid, that they're not too far gone, but we will get some experts in here to, to assess all of this and tell us what we need to do to stop the deterioration and uh, repair it. But before uh, two months ago, when this uh, vegetation took over, we, we could walk up and there is a sidewalk that runs along that fence line right there that goes all the way down and would come out behind the mercantile and behind the peak building. Um, so now that we kind of have control of all this space back here between the two of us, we can work on hopefully getting that cleaned up and keeping it from causing further issues by just being overgrown. So we're gonna make our way back out of this top floor apartment. All of the wood up here has been extensively damaged. This wall right here is where that window would have been in the bedroom, the back wall uh, that has been closed up. It would have been there. So originally it probably collected some light from this um, window in the corner that is half boarded up as well now too, but there would have been originally light coming through there that might have went into that apartment some but it was part of that movement to have light and air in all interior rooms of a building. So kind of, uh, kind of a different approach to all of that than what we saw over in the peak building. And uh, when Tommy takes you on a uh, tour of the mercantile building, what's unique about that building is it has an entirely different light and air system than we've seen in these two buildings. So it's cool to see the different ways that those things were addressed over the years. As we're going down these steps, if you look up, you can see that they actually build almost like a drop ceiling and the original ceiling went straight up. 
and I'm sure some of this was closed in to just kind of keep um, the space smaller to help with uh, heating and and cooling of the space over time. So that's our tour of the Levine building. It's actually um, the building that I'm most excited about from the interior aspects of it. The Peak building is obviously more uh, interesting architecturally from the outside of the building, but uh, this building has a lot of unique features too, and uh, the apartment spaces above are gonna be really uh, fun to renovate when we get to that point, but again, um, this one probably needs the most work of any of the buildings that we purchased because the water damage is just so extensive. So thanks for hanging out with us again and watching this tour and we'll see you all soon.